So within this video, we're gonna go ahead and create a moving platform, much like you see what's going on here. We're gonna add some cool little features to go along with it. And for a quick example, this is what the code looks like, just in case you wanna go ahead and copy and paste it now. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and just build this thing. So to begin this, let's go ahead and open up our content drawer, create a new folder. We're just gonna call this one Blueprints. Let's go ahead and open up said folder. And instead of here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click, choose Blueprint class. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose this top one up here, actor. Let's go ahead and name this one BP underscore moving platform. And then go ahead and just open this one up. The first thing that I'm gonna want is an actual platform to get from point A to point B. So let's go ahead and appear inside of the components. We'll go ahead and choose add. And let's go ahead and bring in a static mesh. So I'll type in static. And I'll go ahead and choose my static mesh right here. Now, if you don't know, the static mesh is basically just a placeholder that we can add any static mesh to. So we're gonna add whatever it is that you wanna to add to it. I'm gonna name it platform. And over here on the far right, inside of the static mesh area, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the none right here and type in cube. What I'm gonna go ahead and grab is this SM cube. So this is my static mesh cube and it's gonna be huge on screen. Um, I do wanna change the size of this. So it's height and the Z value, I'm just gonna point one. And then for my scale and the X and the Y, I'll go ahead and put in two. So it's a nice square. Awesome. So now I have this. And before I start writing the code, I do wanna bring this into my world so I know how big it actually is. So I'm gonna just drag this down to the side here really quick inside my content drawer. I'm gonna open this up and drag this into the world. And I also wanna point out something else that is very important. So for those that are taking notes, the direction that we're gonna send this is going to be kind of important and which way it's actually set up is going to be also important. And this gizmo is set in the corner. So this is also gonna be kind of important. So what I want it to do is to go from inside this to inside of this one. And I do wanna make sure that it's like completely and totally buried. So I'm gonna just move it up here and make sure it's completely in there and is good to go. Perfect, so this will work really well. Now let's go back into this moving platform. So for the code, let's go into the event graph right up here at the top. And I don't need these two nodes, I'll go and get rid of those. So as soon as the game starts, I actually wanna start moving this platform from one location to the next. So let's go ahead and grab a reference to our platform by clicking over here inside the components and drag this in. Now what I want to do is drag from the pin on here, so left mouse click and drag, and what I'm gonna search for is set relative location. Go ahead and choose that one. Cool, so we have a vector on here, so we've got a point in space, an X, Y, Z point in space. Now I don't wanna just set it immediately, I actually wanna do this over time, so I'm gonna need a timeline. So I'll go ahead and right click and type in timeline. And you'll see that it's at the very bottom down there. Go ahead and click on that. Perfect, now let's give this a name. So we'll call this one platform anim. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this node and it's gonna open up a new tab. And you can see that here we're in a new tab up here at the top. And what I'm gonna need is a float track. So it's gonna click on that and look for the float. And let's go ahead and give this a specific name. And what I'm gonna name this is platform alpha. And you'll see why here in a minute. Now I wanna go ahead and add in three keyframes for this, one for the beginning, one for the far side, and then one to send it back. So I'm gonna hold in the shift key on the keyboard, I'm gonna click once, twice, and then three times. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select this first keyframe, and inside of the time value, I'm gonna go ahead and put in zero and zero. So zero for this one, zero for that one. Now the second keyframe is going to be placed where I want it to be in the middle of the animation. So it's gonna go from point A, to point B and then return at point C. So this is going to be in the middle of it. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and have it move and take two seconds to get to where it needs to be. So the time will set in for two and the value I'm gonna set in for one. Now the third one, since I've got it for two seconds, halfway across, we just need to put in for four seconds and the value I wanna make sure this is at zero. Now it looks like these things totally disappeared off screen, but if I click somewhere inside of this area, just left mouse click and I hit the F key on the keyboard, I can then see my animation. I'm gonna hold control and scroll wheel out so I can kind of see a little bit more of this. Now, I don't like this sharp angle. I do want some ease in and ease out. So I'm gonna just select all of these, just my left mouse clicking and dragging over them. I'm gonna right click on them and I can go ahead and set this to auto. And that'll give me a nice ease in and ease out. 
Now, something I want to point out is you'll notice that this ends at five seconds, where my last keyframe is at four. So I'm going to click this button right here, and this is going to say, hey, just use the last keyframe. And then I don't have to worry about setting the length of my timeline here right next to it. So perfect, this is all set up. Let's go back into the event graph. So let's take a look at what we've just created. Inside of our animation, we've actually just created this platform alpha pin. And this is gonna help drive our platform from one place to the next. And we're gonna use that to actually set a location for its beginning and its end. So we're gonna need something that actually lives here in between, and that is going to be a linear interpolate. So let's go ahead and leave a little bit of space in here and go ahead and just move this down below. And what I'm gonna do is just right click in the middle of this and I'm gonna type in a lerp and then vector. And here we have our lerp vector. So go ahead and click on that and check this out. If I zoom in on it, you'll notice that we have an alpha slot down here below. And this is why we named it platform alpha because we know it's gonna go into there. Perfect. So we can use this point A as our start and our point B as our end. And that will drive where our location is on our object. So what we need to do is actually promote these to variables and then make them editable in the world. This is the cool little thing that I was talking about in the beginning. So I'm just gonna right click on this and I'm gonna say promote to variable. And you'll notice this A, it's a horrible name. So let's go ahead and rename this one to something like, oh, I don't know, start or start position. And we'll do the same thing on B, right click on that and say promote to variable. And we'll name this one end. And let's make sure they're not overlapping. That works a little bit better. Okay, so we've got a start and we've got an end vector, but we wanna be able to see them inside of the world. Again, this is the cool part that we need to be able to play with. So with start selected over here on the far right, we wanna make this an instance editable so we can play with it in the actual editor. And the other thing that we're gonna turn on is this one right here, this is show 3D widget. And this way we'll have like a little indicator in the world on where we're actually gonna be able to move this thing from point A to point B. So we'll click on that one. We'll do the same thing with end, come over here and say instance editable and also show 3D widget. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pipe this return value into the new location. Next, what we need to do is kind of set up our execution pins. So when the game starts, let's go ahead and play this. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and update the location of this object. Now we do want this to repeat over and over and over. So from our finished pin, let's actually bring in a delay. So you can type in the word delay, go ahead and click on that. And however long you want this to delay is totally up to you. In my case, I'm just gonna make it basically instant. So I'll just say 0.1, and then we'll take that completed pin and we'll go ahead and plug it into the play from start, like so. So this should give us everything that we need for the code to make this thing go back and forth. So we can go ahead and compile, and save that. And now let's jump into the map. Now, if you ended up burying your blueprint inside of some of the geometry, no worries, just come up to your outliner and search for your blueprint, so BP underscore moving platform. And we see that we have it right here and you can select it from up here and that'll go ahead and give it to you. And with this one selected, let's go ahead and zoom in on it. You will notice, I'm gonna lift it up here a little bit, that there are these little tiny things, these little diamonds here. And if you click and drag it, you can actually move them around. So this is your start point. Now, something to remember, this is very important. That pivot point is going to represent where this is gonna be starting. Okay, so if I grab my endpoint and I drag it over here, I want to make sure that it is pretty well buried inside of this area, right? So I'm going to select that blueprint from over here. You can actually click on the little icon there and just drag this down. And now you can see that it's going to be buried down in there. So it should go from the start to the end now. So let's go ahead and give this a test. I'll go ahead and say play up here. Boom, and it goes over and it comes back. And it didn't quite bury itself. It got pretty close though, so let's go ahead and escape from that. We'll grab that end point and we'll just push it in a little farther. Say play. There we go. So it's going to go back and forth and back and forth. And of course, we can go ahead and take this. And if I wanted to, I can move this anywhere I want in the world. So I can actually make this go up in the air too if I need. So this is a very customizable way to build a platform to get from one point to the next.